Welcome to Surgery Squad's Virtual Breast Enhancement Surgery with Saline Implants. I'm Dr. Susie, and I'll be assisting you with this procedure today. For those with a weak stomach or have children in the room, I need to let you know that the next few steps get a bit graphic and contain nudity. This procedure may not be appropriate for work or school environments. Click the Continue button when ready. Breast enhancement surgery, also known as augmentation mammoplasty, involves increasing the size or changing the shape of a woman's breasts through the placement of saline implants under the breast tissue or under the chest muscle behind the breast. The surgery can give a woman fuller breasts or restore breast volume lost after weight reduction or pregnancy. It is also done to equalize breasts that are different sizes or as reconstruction after breast surgery, such as a mastectomy. Our patient feels that her breasts are too small and wants to augment them through surgery. She has spent time with her doctors to understand what is involved in the surgery, as well as the benefits and risks. Her surgeon offered a computer program that simulates what the patient would look like with different breast sizes. Use the slider to demonstrate to our patient what she would look like with different sized breasts. It looks like our patient has chosen a size she likes. Let's scrub in and get to work. In order to make sure each implant is in the correct position, we must first mark where the current top of the breast is and where the midline between the two breasts is as well. This will help us when we position the implant. I've marked each of these with the dotted line. Can you draw them in with a marker? Now we need to measure the breast to decide where the top of the implant should go. We do this by measuring with a caliper from the middle of the areola. Draw with the marker at 12 centimeters to mark the top of the implant. Then draw the outline of where the implants are going to be placed. On some patients, the creases below the breast are not at the same level. If this is the case, we would make our incisions at different levels to ensure the breasts are even after surgery. However, this is not the case with this patient. To begin the surgery, we need to start an IV to provide our patient with fluids and medication. I've already tied a tourniquet around her upper arm. Can you find a suitable vein in the patient's hand? Wow, that's a big one. Sterilize the insertion area using an alcohol wipe. Insert the needle and advance the angiocatheter into the vein. The small burst of blood that just appeared in the angiocatheter hub is known as a flashback. This lets us know that the angiocatheter is correctly positioned in the patient's vein. Now I'll release the tourniquet. While applying gentle pressure over the vein to collapse it, you can remove the needle. This will reduce the amount of blood that may discharge out of the angiocatheter when the needle is removed. Once you remove the needle, it will be properly disposed in a sharps container. I'll lock the IV tubing to the angiocatheter by rotating the locking mechanism. Lastly, we need to secure the IV with tape and test the line. Next, we'll use a chemical antiseptic known as chlorhexidine to cleanse the patient's skin. Use the applicator to apply the chlorhexidine to the surgical site. While some anesthesiologists may prefer to give a patient a general anesthetic using the IV line, we'll be administering it using a face mask. 
Once the patient begins breathing in the anesthetic gas, her bloodstream will absorb the gas and carry it to her brain. At this point, her brain will stop receiving signals from the nerves in her body, allowing her to be completely asleep and pain-free during the surgery. Start by placing the mask over the patient's nose and mouth. Once it's in place, we'll turn on the anesthetic gas. Now that our patient is unconscious, we'll insert an endotracheal tube into her mouth and down into the windpipe. This will help her breathe and provide a constant mixture of oxygen and anesthetic gases during surgery. The incisions for breast enhancement surgery may be made under the breasts, around the areolas, or under the arm. For our surgery, we'll make the incision under the crease of each breast. This area leaves little noticeable scarring. Now sketch where we'll be making our incisions. Perfect! Now let's grab a scalpel and make the necessary incisions so we can insert the implants. With our incisions made, we'll now make room for the implant. To do so, we need to slide a finger into the incision and gently sweep it back and forth to separate the pectoral muscle from the ribs. Using a finger is gentler than a metal instrument and lessens the chance for damage to the nipple's nerves. Now we carefully insert a retractor and cauterize any muscle groups still attached. Nice job! Now we need to prepare the implants. Breast enlargement is achieved through the placement of a silicone pouch called a lumen. The lumen may be filled with either silicone gel or saline. There are advantages and disadvantages to each type. Click each implant type to see the pros and cons of each. Our patient has chosen a saline implant. The implant is shipped filled with sterile air. Click the implant fill site to snap the fill tube into the implant. Now click to squeeze the air out of the implant. We'll use the same tube to fill the implant with sterile saline. Great! Let's go back to our patient to insert the implant. First, we attach the fill tube to a syringe filled with our saline, and then we'll insert 50 cc's of saline into the implant. Nice work! Next, we'll insert the saline implant. Notice that the implant is mostly empty. This allows us to roll the implant and easily slip it into the pocket we formed under the breast muscle. Can you slide the implant into the incision? Well done! Now we'll inject the rest of the saline.
Now we adjust the implant with a finger and then pull the fill tube out. The fill site automatically closes when the tube is removed. Click to give the tube a sharp tug. Great! Let's do the other breast and then we'll check them for evenness. Our patient is still under anesthesia, but we've placed her in an upright seated position. This is so we can inspect the breasts for implant placement and evenness. We examine the top and bottom of the implants in the breast, as well as the placement of the nipples. It looks like the left implant is a little higher than the right. Can you lower it? Perfect! Now we need to move our patient back to a flat position to prepare to close the incisions. With our patient lying down again, we'll inject some long-lasting numbing medicine into the incisions before closing. And now we're ready to suture the incisions closed. Nice stitching! Breast enhancement is typically an outpatient procedure. The patient is released once she has recovered from the anesthetic. When our patient returns home, she needs to ensure that she's following our doctor's recovery guidelines. Be aware that if the implant is placed under the chest muscle, limited activity will last longer. And there we have breast enhancement surgery using saline implants. After our work and her recovery, our patient is happier about her appearance and is more confident in herself. Thanks for stopping by Surgery Squad. Why not check out one of our other procedures? Check out our other videos on SurgerySquad.com.